Hello, everybody. Um, welcome once again. Looks like we have a smaller group tonight. Perhaps everybody's just desperately off trying to go finish their assignments. Um, so now that I've attached everything to this coat, I can't take it off. Oh, well. um, so what we've done so far is I've shown you lots of um, an awful lot of programming tools that you can use to do stuff, but we really haven't sat back and looked at how to use them in problem solving for an extended example. So we want to take a break now from introducing you to a whole bunch of new stuff and, uh, and spend the next week or so um, looking at how we use the things that, we've, that I've shown you so far to solve a, a bigger problem. Um, and we'll look at a couple of, um, we'll look at a couple of techniques for, for doing the problem solving, but we're going to do this one run, running example, which is going to be, we're going to write a dating site, uh, or at least we're going to write a dating site, it's not going to be a real dating site, but we'll have sort of some of the, the code back end for, for a dating site, because I figured that would be kind of interesting. Um, so hopefully this is going to, sort of going to be a revision, but it's also going to be talking about how we actually use the things in order to build something. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is start from the very beginning. Um, so I talked about in the first week about how there are seven stages of programming. And I'm going to basically sort of be walking through these today. We're probably going to, um, maybe we'll get as far as the design and some of the implementation. And then next week we'll start looking at the, um, at the rest of it. Uh, 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 finish the implementation uh, and then how we go about testing and debugging it. Um, so, um, so let's plow right in. So the requirements for our, for our dating site uh, we want to build a dating site that contains profiles for many users. Um, each profile should have information like their year of birth, their star sign, whether they like dogs or like cats, um, other, other such exciting information as that. Um, and then we need some way to, so we're going to have a collection of profiles, we're going to have a whole bunch of them. We need some way of looking up profiles by name. We need some way of filtering profiles by matching um, matching requirements. We need some way of sorting profiles by desirable information. Um, and we need some way of having some users block other users. So we're going we're gonna to try and aim for, these are the, our main sort of features that we need to have. So that some users can't necessarily see other users in the thing. Um, so that's a nice set of requirements that client might tell us the sort of things that they need, but obviously that's not enough for a specification for our program. So we need to be a bit more precise than that when we go to the specification. Um, now, you'll notice when you're in the assignments, and a number of you have probably always fa already found this in the assignments, the assignments that I give you are somewhere between a requirement and a specification, in that I tell you what you need to do, and I tell you some of the specifications of exactly what it needs to have, but there are always going to be ambiguities. Um, so the process, of going for, the process of going from requirements to specification to design to implementation is really a process of removing the ambiguities in a way. The code is the very specific thing that you've built, but you've got to build it out of a, uh, out of a more general purpose design, which comes from a more general purpose set of specifications, which comes from usually quite a vague set of requirements. So the requirements we have are very general. We're going to have to start pinning down what, what exactly we mean by that. Um, and this will be a problem that you come up against again and again. Um, in assignments, you know, I will always, there will always be something that I haven't quite pinned down because I hadn't thought it through entirely in writing the assignment spec. But, and, and, you, and you can very well um, berate me for that, but in real life, if you ever do programming as a job, your clients will not, will not know what they want. They will just know what they don't want. They, won't, they will uh, tell you, tell you we want something like this and then you'll build it for them and they say, no, 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 that's not what we wanted at all. Um, so we have to get used to doing this process. So going to specification then, what we're going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to have this specific set of data. So we're not, um, the requirements said appropriate profile data. This is, our, this is the set of data that we're interested in. We're going to have a unique username for each user. So we have some way of identifying a user just by name. Um, we're going to keep track of their year of birth. We're going to keep track of their star sign. We're going to treat track of two fields, one for, one for whether they like dogs and one for whether they like cats. 
And, um, and actually, they're going to just be true false. So it's not going to be how much you like dogs. It's just going to be, yes, I like dogs. Um, and we're also going to keep, for every profile, we're going to keep a list of who, who else is blocked with that. And so that's just going to be a simple list of names that we can add names to if we want to. Um, so this is the information we're going to have in our profiles. And we're going to, as we go, we're going to start to convert this into an object. But this is, at the moment, this is just, just pinning down the information that we want. Um, to do lookup, we want to we want to do fairly fast lookup. Um, given a username, we want to be able to instantly return back the uh, who the the profile of that user. Um, however, we want to we want to restrict that to uh, to people who aren't blocked, so that um, so that when we when we do ask for a profile, we're going to give the name of the person requesting the profile. And if the person requesting the profile is blocked, we're not going to return the profile. So we don't, we're not just going to look up profiles and, and return them. We're going to actually test, first of all, whether we're blocked. And if, we're not, and if, we, if a user doesn't exist or, or the asker is blocked, then we're going to return null instead. So this is going to be the way we're just going to do lookup. We're going to do lookup like that. And this is where we're going to do that kind of uh, blocking thing. We're also going to do filtering. Um, we're going to get one method which provides access to all unblocked profiles. So if I ask for everybody, I can get a list of everybody with the people who are blocked filtered out. Um, then what I can do, given that list, the way I'm going to approach the problem is say, I've got this one list of everybody on the, on the site. I now want to filter that list by star sign to find only the Geminis. And so I'm going to go through that list in some fashion, find the, find the Geminis, just, and then just return the list which just has Geminis on it. And then I can take that list and filter it by just Geminis who like cats. And so I run it through another filter which removes everybody who doesn't like cats. And so I'm gonna, I've decided to implement this as a process of take a list and then filter out people that we're not interested in. So the matching process is going to be done like that. There are lots of different ways we could do the matching process, but this seemed like an easy way that sort of uses the tools that we're already familiar with. Um, so that's how we're going to treat it. We're going to treat it as you start with a list of, of everybody and then you cut out the people you're not interested in and then you cut out some more people you're not interested in by various criteria. Um, and we're only going to implement filters by star sign and filters by liking cats or liking dogs. Um, we're also going to implement sorting. Um, for the sake of this thing, we're only going to sort people by age because um, we don't have, well, we don't have any other way at the moment of computing a number which sort of orders people. Um, this probably isn't what we actually want in the requirements. The requirements actually said we wanted to sort them by preference order. But we're just going to assume that our preference is for a person of a certain age. Um, so we're going to sort them by age. Um, it'll show you how to do sorting. It probably isn't the best, the best criteria in which to be sorting people for this, this assignment. But that isn't important. OK, so given that that's what we want to do, um, we now have to, I'm actually, I am going to take this coat off because I'm getting too warm, which means I'm going to have to remove this carefully. All right, how do I put this back on so I'm, Morgan, so I'm not going to... Huh? I can't see what I'm doing. Can someone... Can you go... <laughs> I need to take my jacket off because I'm getting too hot. What? Oh yeah, thank you. I can attach this to there. Oops, there. How's that? Can you still hear me? Good. Right, now I can put that in my pocket. And I'm not going to die of heat stroke. Um, OK, back to where we were. So we have a specification of what, we, what we're trying to do. Now we need to start designing our code. And this is where it starts getting, uh, getting big. OK, so we have to think about the first thing to think about is what are the fundamental objects that are, that are going to be represented in our code. So what sort of levels of abstraction are we going to be looking at? Now, the, the outermost level of abstraction is, this, is actually the second one here, is a dating site. We will have one dating site which, is the, uh, which will answer requests. And so the requests for, um, for doing search and filtering and things like that will be handled by the dating site object. And it'll just be one, there'll just be one of those and we'll interact with it to do those methods. Um, but we're not going to 
Well, we're going to use abstraction to actually break that down into, uh, into smaller classes. We don't want to store all the data on the dating site. Um, so a natural object in this, in this system is the idea of a profile. One profile contains a certain set of objects about one user, and uh, we can just and that we can hide all that information inside that profile and, uh, and just treat it as a single unit. Um, sorry, you're distracting me with your talk down the front. Sorry, thank you. Um, it's just annoying talking over you. Um, so, so we're going to have individual profiles that are going to objects which are going to keep track of users, single users, and then we're going to use a bunch of those profile objects in order to implement a dating site. Um, so the, the profile class is going to re record uh, all, the, all the sort of information about a particular user, and then the dating site is going to be a collection of profiles, and it's going to ser provide search facilities over those profiles. Uh, so these are the natural objects to do. Um, I think we'll see how, how we go with implementing that. So then what's going to be on, what information do we need on a profile? Um, so each profile, we said, if we look back here, we had a list of the information that we needed to, uh, needed to store on a profile. This was in our spec. So each of these pieces of information, we've now got to convert to a field on our profile in some fashion. Um, so if we move forwards uh, to here, we now see these are going to be the fields that we're going to put on our profile. Um, we get a user, everyone has to have a username, they have to have a, a birth date, um, which is going to be their year, they're going to have to have a star sign, and we're going to store the star sign as an integer just from 1 to 12. Um, they're going to have a, two booleans, one if they like cats and one if they like dogs. And finally, they're going to have a list of names of blocked users. So this is a list of strings. These strings are going to be other usernames for people who can't see that profile. Um, so this is, the way, this is the, the way that we're going to implement this information. Um, so let's, uh, actually, let's do that in, in BlueJ now. So we have a dating site project. We're going to create a new class. We're going to call that class um, uh, profile. And we're going to open up our profile. So now, like I said, the seventh stage of programming, which goes alongside everything else, is documentation. So I'm going to take some time. In, in doing what I've in showing you examples so far, I've been a little, li bleh, a little bit lax in my documentation because I just wanted to show you how the code would work. This time I'm going to try to make sure I document everything along the way. If I forget to comment at something, please remind me because I should go back and comment everything. So let's start out. Say so a description of the profile. So a profile of a single user on our dating site. Site. Uh, this profile stores following uh, username uh, what did we say year of birth uh, star sign uh, like preferences uh, whether they like cats and dogs, and, um, okay, so stores the following personal information. Let's actually make it clear what we're talking about. Uh, it also maintains a list of other users who are blocked from reading this profile. Cool. All right, so that kind of describes what we're doing. I'm going to put my name here, Malcolm Ryan. I'm going to put the date that I wrote this. This is version, uh, what is the date? 18th of August, August 18, 2011. Okay, and um, when you... If you create a new profile, a new class in, in BlueJ, um, 
I've actually fixed my version, but the new, normally there comes up with a whole bunch of sample stuff in, in the class. Um, just delete all that. That's really meant to be, it's really, it's useful the first time you look and every other time it's really annoying having to delete that. Um, I found a way, which I can't even remember now, of actually making sure that that never comes up anymore. But um, <coughs> um, I can go, if you want to do that, I can find out how to fix that. It's, there, I found, found it somewhere on the Blue Jay website. Someone said how to fix it. So normally we'll start with an empty class like this. We'll get rid of any of the template stuff that it puts in there. All right. So we're going to make those fields that I wrote here. So let's have a look at those. Username, birth year, star sign. So our fields are all always private because we like to keep our information private so that only so that we only we can change our information. So we have a private string my username. So my username is a string. We have private int my birth year. We're going to private, what were the other ones? Int my star sign. And because that the star sign isn't naturally an integer, like, so a username is naturally a string, a birth year is naturally an integer, but a star sign isn't naturally a, an integer. So what we're going to put here is a little note to make it clear. Um, from 1 to 12, where 1 equals, what is the first star sign? What is the January star sign? Anyone know? Capricorn? Oh, well, I was going to, normal, Aquarius. I'd normally go Aquarius. Let's go from Aquarius and 12 equals Capricorn. If I can spell Capricorn. Did I spell that right? Yes. Okay. Um, and whatever else, and okay, two booleans, private boolean, my likes cats, and we'll copy and paste that to make private boolean, my likes dogs, and what was the other one? Ah, and so this, the final one, this one's a bit more complicated. This is going to be an array list of strings, um, which is my blocked users, right? So we're keeping what one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of information: uh, a name, which is which is text, so it's a string; a birth year, which is an int; a star sign, which we're also going to use an int to represent. Um, we're going to have two booleans for whether we like cats and whether we like dogs. And we're going to have a list of strings, which is the names of all the blocked users. And we'll actually put a comment here, um, names of usernames, let's say usernames who are blocked. Um, because it's, a, cause it's not clear if this is a list of strings, what those strings are. So we write a comment just to make that clear. Yep. So if um, the my star sign has got an integer, yep. So, so okay, so star sign, we could make separate, a star sign probably isn't complicated enough to, to warrant being an object. It's not like there is in any, any internal state to a star sign. If we actually had lots of data about each star sign, we could make a separate object for, for each star sign. Um, but it's really not all that, it's just, it's just going to be a, a either, you know, we're just going to keep track of which one you are. And so it's really just one thing out of 12, right? Um, in fact, I'll introduce, although I will tell you something here um, that I was going to talk about later, but let's, let's talk about that now. Um, there's a problem. So one of the problems in our code is going to be if we do use an integer to represent a star sign, if we come up with like an integer which says my star sign is 5, um, I don't know, I don't know off the top of my head what star sign 5 is, right? And if I'm writing my code, if I'm reading that code and it says that set, set star sign to 5, um, it might be a, you know, the code isn't very clear. So that's probably bad style. So using a number is, is sort of a convenient way of representing it, but it makes it, makes it harder to read. We could use a string. We could have every, every one as an individual string. But the problem is if we have it as a string, then, well, it's, that's sort of overkill because they can have many more than the 12 strings that we want. Um, and so one of the things that we do, so, so having code, for example, like um, 
let me just write something something that wouldn't want me. Um, yeah. Probably, let's write a constructor very briefly. Profile. Um, writing code like this, my star sign equals seven. That's not very clear, right? If you read that, you wouldn't immediately know what star sign I was. You'd have to go, well, what is the seventh star sign? Aquarius, blah, 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 right? Um, if I wanted to make that clearer, what I could do is say, put a comment and say that that's Leo, because um, star sign seven is Leo. But what I can do to make it even clearer is actually give names to each of the star signs. So we still represent them as numbers, but we give names to those numbers. And so this is actually, I wasn't going to introduce new stuff, but this is worth talking about. Um, we can introduce what's called constants, um, which is basically just a way of giving a name to a number that we're going to use in our code. Um, so what we do is this. It looks kind of um, final static um, int leo equals 7. All right. And then what that achieves, so, oh, actually, yeah, so... Um, what that achieves now is it, this, this creates what's called a constant. Um, a constant is exactly like a variable. Um, in, so this, this declaration is exactly like any other de variable declaration over here, right? Um, in this part of the variable declaration, it looks very similar, except that we've made our variable all in uppercase because we generally good style is to name your variables in uppercase. But this bit over here, the final static, what that means is this is a variable. This is a variable that can never change. So in a sense, it's a variable that can never vary, um, which is why we call it a constant instead. So this is a number that once we've set the symbol Leo to equal to seven, we can't change it to any other value. Um, so it's not. It's not unlike where we might have a variable. We could we can change a variable many times. This variable we set it once, and then it's always going to be that value. Um, the only reason we do this is basically because that's useful now to give a name to that value. So rather than that value having to be 7, I can now say my star sign equals Leo. Um, and so what I can do here is set up a, a whole set of those things um, for every single star sign. Let's see if I can remember what they all are. Aquarius equals 1. Um, I have no idea after that. I know that Gemini is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I don't know, can't remember any of the others. Can anyone remember any of the others? Capricorn's 12. Aquarius is 1. Let's have a look at a website. Firefox. There must be something on the web that has star signs, you think? Actually, let's... Oops. Wikipedia. Wikipedia will do, tell us. Star signs. Or actually a zodiac, I suppose, but whatever. Oh, and I've got to do this thing again, which I always forget to do. Stop that. Come here. Stop. Give me what? No, why are you not working? It will not let me click on that. Click. No? Okay. Close. Go away. No. Oh, yep. Yeah. Maybe. Anyway. Well, we just won't use the other star signs. What the heck? People who are not Aquarius, Gemini, Leo, or Capricorns don't matter. Um, I'm sorry. Anyway, we could fill out that list. Um, this, I mean, so this is really just giving us a way of substituting whenever, rather than writing the number, rather than writing the number five in the code, we write the symbol Gemini, and rather than writing number seven in the code, we can write the symbol Leo. And so we can use these constants to make our code clearer. Um, having a number like this, we normally call, if we had it like that, we'd normally call this a magic number. A magic number is any number that just turns up in your code which is not really clear what it means. Um, uh, so if you look at that, why is that 7? What does 7 mean in this context? It's very hard to know, know what 7 means. Um, so if ever, if ever I comment in your code that using magic numbers is bad, what I mean is you have a number in your code which just sits there and doesn't tell me what the number means. Almost every number you use in your code other than one and maybe two is probably going to be a magic number. Um, so you define, 
whenever you can, define a, define a constant and give it a name that explains what that number is, means and what it's being used for. So if you're doing math, you define constants for like pi um, and things like that. If you're doing any number of things, if, um, if we were doing uh, the, uh, the assignment one, where you have, a, you have a magic number in your code, presumably, which is that a, that a healing potion gives you 10 hit points back. Right? That's a magic number. Why is it 10? Why can't it be any, why, what other number could it be? Um, we should actually take that out and make it a constant, so that rather than 10, you have a constant saying that is, that is the amount that a, healing, uh, uh, that a healing potion heals. And then if you ever want to change it, you only have to change it in that one place in the constant. It doesn't matter for your assignment, because I didn't expect you to know that yet. Um, so don't worry about it. None whatsoever. Um, Java is smart enough to know that the, when, when you compile it, it knows these numbers will never change, and so it just takes that number and sticks it in there. Um, so by telling it that that number is final, you know, you know in Java knows that that number will never change, and therefore it can just, wherever it sees Leo, it can substitute 7, and it, and it doesn't matter. Um, so it's really just a style thing. It has no effect on your code. Um, on, so anyway, where were we? Um, Right, so let's delete that profile because that doesn't, isn't going to do what we want to do. Anyway, that's our, that's our layout. That's going to be our design for this class. And so now we kind of know what the information we have, we have is. Um, there are no... One of the things we should probably consider at this stage is whether there are any important relationships between this data. Um, fortunately, in our case, there are no... All of these pieces of information are more or less independent. Um, you could, you know... Whether you like cats doesn't change anything else here. Um, we should, if we, often you'll come up with pieces of information that are actually interrelated to one another, in which case you need to actually, at the design stage, make sure you know what those relationships are uh, and so that your code maintains those relationships. The only important things here, we need to make sure that no one can set their star sign to a number outside, 1 to 12, um, and maybe that no one can set their birth year to a year in the future or a couple of other things like that. So there are some constraints on these variables, but, um, but there's no real important interrelations that we need to keep track of. Okay, so that's, hopefully that compiles. Oh no, oh, so we're using an array list. So this is what I always forget to do. Import java.util.arraylist. Um, so that's... Because the array list is in the Java class library, you'll remember anything that we're using from the class library we have to import. Um, in particular, if you look at the documentation, array list is in the package Java util, and so we import Java util array list and a semicolon at the end. Okay, now we can compile that. Yes, good, okay. And there we have a, um, our profile class, or at least the starting of our profile class. While we're here, we should actually edit this. This is just the readme file telling what we're doing. We'll say dating site is the name of the project. The purpose of the project is to implement a simple dating site that allows us to search for interesting for people we like to date. Yay. That's uh, data. You can see I'm a computer scientist. The, the word data, I type more readily than the word date. That says something, I'm sure. I find it easier to type the word data than the word date. Great. That's really good. Um, this is the August 18, 2011 version. How to start this project. We don't have a way of doing that yet. The authors is just me. And the user instructions, well, we don't have any user instructions yet because we haven't got that far. So that's just a little file containing information about the, the, the whole project. Uh, so writing that file is also a good part of doing your documentation. You should actually, anything that isn't about individual classes, anything that's about an individual class should be on that class, but anything that's about the whole project as a whole should be stored in that readme file, and that's what it's there for. Um, okay, so we, have, so we have a profile class that has the fields that we want. Um, we're also going to have a bunch of accessor methods. Um, so I'm going to just going to, so we've got accessor methods to get at all that data. Because all the data is private, we can't read that data from outside the object. So we need accessor methods in order to read the data. 
Um, so these are going to be public methods that return the appropriate pieces of data. Um, and in fact, we can, I'll, I'll just, um, what I shall do, I'm just going to copy and paste this actually, copy all that, paste it into here. We're not going to implement them yet, but I'll just stick them in here. Actually, I won't put those semicolons there because that would be wrong. I'll stick them in here, and okay, there are the methods that we plan to implement. Okay, so so in this stage, all we're doing is designing. We're actually designing the interface. So we've designed the the, inf the implementation, which is what data it, it stores. This is the interface. This tells us what ways, what methods do other, do we have to let other people access this. Um, and so these are, as interface things, these are all actually public. So we can make these all public. So public, public, public. Right. And we'll call these the accessor methods. If I can spell accessor methods. And we'll actually comment them now. Why, might as well. Um, return. the username for this profile. So we actually said here that we wanted to, act, we are, we're storing the date of birth with the birth year, we actually want to return the age. So return the user's age in years. So, um, and that's important because we could be returning their age in days or months or, or seconds or whatever else. So it, just because we're returning an int doesn't mean that that int is in years, so we might as well say that, put a comment there to say that that is the user's age in years. Return the user's star sign as an integer 1 to 12 using the constants Defined above. That will do. Um, okay, this one is returns true if the user likes cats. Okay, and then we can copy and paste that one down here. Returns true if the user likes dogs. Okay, and finally, um, this one. So while we have a list of blocked users, we don't actually want to return the list. What we do is want to re ask it for whether a particular user is blocked. So this one says returns true if the given user is blocked by this profile. Um, so that's going to, so what we have so we're not, unlike the other accessors, most of the other accessors are actually just going to return the, piece, the appropriate field. This one isn't going to return the list of blocked users. It's just going to, you're going to, we're going to ask it, is this user blocked? It's going to look on the list, check whether or not they're blocked, and return either true or false. Um, because that's probably going to be more useful to us. Um, that's not going to compile right now because we haven't finished those things. But we're going to move on. Because we we're just in the design stage, we're not going to implement those things yet. Um, so the mutator methods then, um, we're going to assume that you can't change your username and you can't change your birthday or your star sign. Um, we're just going to allow you to, uh, to decide whether or not you like cats and whether or not you like dogs. You can change your mind on those things. Um, and we're going to allow you to block a user and unblock a user, of it, so, um, which will add, you, add a user to the block list or remove the user from the block list. Right, so these are the things we want to do, not that, we'll take all that. And because these are all um, mutators, um, they're all going to return void, or they all have a void return type, which means that they don't need to actually return anything. Um, whoops. Okay, so we now have mutator methods. Um, and this one, and they're all public because they're part of the uh, public interface of this class. 
So these are the ways that other people can change this thing. We'll just remove that. Okay, and we comment each of these as well because we're good at documenting our code. Um, set the set whether you like cats to either true or false. So the um, so it's and then we do the same thing for dogs. We make sure our code lines up nicely and neatly. There we go. Uh, whoops, that's not a okay. Add this uh, the given user to the list of whoops list of blocked users. Right. And the other one is going to remove the given user whoops user. Uh -huh. And that would be user from the list of blocked users, unblocked user. All right. So this is all the things we want to do with the profile. Um, and I think that. And the other thing we need to add in here is, of course, we're going to have to add a constructor. Um, so we didn't. I actually didn't write the constructor in the design, but we do need to include a constructor. Um, we're going to have a public. Um, so the, name, the constructor is always the same name as the class, so it's profile. And um, so what information do we... So, the, so now we can actually move towards in implementing this, this profile. So we're going we're gonna to worry about designing the other part later. Um, so let me just check where we are. Okay, we've got our mutator methods. Okay, so we're going to design the dating site. We've finished our design for the profile. We're going to design the, the dating site in a minute, but what I want to do now is try to finish this, finish this implementation. Um, so the first thing we need to do, so we've got, we've got, a, bunch of, of, um, we've got a bunch of fields. Um, so this is the data that is on every single, every single thing. We need to initialize every single profile. We need to initialize these fields to some sensible values. So some of these fields, um, for example, the username, the, uh, the birth year, the star sign, um, those fields are probably going to be given as soon as we create a user, we're going to, because we can't change those fields, we have to create the user with, with some values for those fields. And the, uh, the values for those fields are going to come from wherever we're creating, for, um, whoever's creating the user, we're going to, the values are going to come from there. And so those values are going to be parameters for here. So we need at least the parameters. We need at least three parameters. One is a username for the person we're creating. One is an integer um, birth year for the person we're creating, and one is an integer star sign for the person we're creating. Um, so those are the three parameters. Now we could also include in the constructor whether or not they like cats, and we could include in the constructor whether or not they like dogs. Um, what I'm actually going to do, because we have mutator methods for changing those things, I'm going to construct, uh, when I construct a new profile, I'm just going to assume that you don't like cats and you don't like dogs. And then I'm going to allow you to change that later. So not everything has to be set in the constructor. Only the critical things need to be set in the constructor. Some things can be set later. So some things we can just have some default value for. Um, so we can say my username, we initialize my username to the username that we're given. We initialize my birth year to the birth year that we're given, and we initialize my star sign to the star sign that we're given. So when we call this constructor, um, we have to provide these three pieces of information. And the three pieces of information that we provide, username, birth year, and star sign, are then going to be recorded in the fields, uh, my username, my birth year, and my star sign. So this is... Um, this is a way of storing, we're storing that information and it's going to hang around inside here because the parameters themselves are going to get thrown away when we've finished running this method. Um, we have to initialize all the other fields though as well. Uh, my likes cats. We're going to assume of the default value is false, that most people don't like cats. What the heck? 
And we're also going to assume that the default value for my likes dogs, yeah, I know, I'm running out of time, go away. Um, we're going to assume the default value for my likes dogs is also false. Right. So those two values are going to start out as false when you create a new profile, but you can change them because we're going to write a method down here which allows us to change those parts of the profile. So we've got my set likes cats and set likes dogs if we want to change those things. The last field that we need to initialize is my blocked users. Now this, this is a list, so we have to use the, um, so a list is actually an object um, type, so we have to use the new thing, we have to actually call the constructor on the array list to create one of those things. And so we say my blocked users equals new. New creates a new object, the object that we want to create is an array list, and the particular kind, the type parameter for this array list is that thing that goes in the angle brackets. This is actually an array list of strings. Okay, so this is the name. So the, the constructor is always, when we call a constructor in code, it's always new. And then the name of the type, this whole thing is the name of the type. In this case, we have a, it's a parameterized type, so we need to provide a type parameter, which is a, so that it's a list of strings. The last thing we do then is, is the parentheses, and inside the parentheses go the parameters, but there are no parameters in this case because we're using a no parameter constructor. That's the standard empty list constructor. And then a semicolon at the end of the line. So that's created uh, um, initially there are no blocked users. Right. So, um, and we'll comment here, assume most People don't like cats or dogs um, by default. Um, so, and notice what I'm doing with the comments. I'm not commenting uh, create a new array list of string and store it in the my blocked user field because that's what that says already, right? What I'm commenting is what we're doing. Why are we doing that? Um, so the comments are there to explain the purpose of the code, not to describe what the code is doing. Um, I am perfectly able to read Java code so I can see that that's, that's creating an empty array list of string, but I don't know why we're creating an empty array list of string. And so what I'm doing is actually um, recording the, the, the meaning of that statement rather than the actual, rather than just what it does, repeating what it does. Okay, so that profile, uh, that constructor now will initialize all our fields. Um, the username, birth year, star sign, likes cats, likes dogs, and blocked users are all been initialized. So that's good. Now we can start working on our accesses. So, some of, so each of these accesses is a public method. Um, it has a, a name which reflects the name of the thing that we're getting, and it has a type which we're returning. So this is a pub, this, the get username is public, and it returns a string, and to implement it, we put in, in braces after it. Um, all we have to do is return my username, um, because we already have the username, so we just return it. Easy. That was easily done. Let's skip down. I'm going to skip my age for the second. We're going to do get star sign. All we're going to do is say, okay, so open, we in the braces, my, return my star sign. And we have to make sure that in each case, my username is a string and we return type is a string, so we're returning the same type as, as we've defined. My star sign is an int and the return type is an int, so the return types match there as well. Um, we couldn't return a string if we had a return type of int or vice versa. Um, again, likes cats. My likes cats is a Boolean, so if we return my likes cats, Oops, my likes cats. Um, that will do what we want. My likes cats, if my likes cats is true, then, then this returns true. If it's false, then it returns false. And here we can do the same for my likes dogs. So this is all very easy. My likes dogs, if I can spell dogs. And that's again a Boolean. Um, so this one, though, is a little bit different because while we have... Um, while we, have the, uh, the, while we have stored up here the, uh, the birth year, what we want now is to return the age. 
So how do we actually work out someone's age if we only know their birth year? Yeah, okay, current year minus birth year. So what we want to do is return current year minus my birth year. Okay, but where are we going to get current year from? So let's make... Okay, so there are a couple of things we could do. If we, if we were just, if this was only going to run in 2011, we could do that. Um, of course, that's kind of, kind of dumb because as soon as the code gets to next year, it won't work anymore. Um, we could change the code every year to make that work. That would be a way to keep ourselves in a job, but, um, but not really not really good programming style. Um, we actually, there's actually a, um, something nice in Java. Um, so well, what else we could do? We could actually have that as a parameter. We could say this. We could, uh, we could rather than worry about it ourselves, we could just expect whoever's calling us to tell us the answer. Um, so then you'd have to call, we, when to find out the current year, we just ask, it's not my problem, whoever asked me, they've got to tell me the current year and then I'll tell you the age. That could work. That's kind of annoying as well. Um, that just passes off the work to somebody else. Um, the, probably the, right, the actual, well, one of the better ways of doing it, Java actually implements a date class. If you look in the, in the manual for Java, how are we going on time? Okay, we're about out of time. Uh, I, I don't have time to mess around with, the in, with that. I'll show you more of this next time. But what we can do is say um, uh, date today equals new date. Um, and the date class is also in Java Util, so we'd need to actually import the date class. But if you go looking in the API, it has, if we create a new date with no parameters, it, it creates today's date. So it actually goes and looks at the system clock on the computer and creates today's date. Um, so that creates a date object, which is going to be today's date. Then we could just say, um, we'll look at this in more detail next week, we don't really have time, but we can say today dot get year, which is an accessor to get this year's. So this, this actually, dates are now treated as objects that contain a lot of information. We can get today's date by just constructing a date without asking, without giving it any parameters, and then we can get the year field from that date uh, to find out what this current, the current year is. Um, that's one way of solving this. Of course, this still doesn't give us the right answer. Why doesn't this give us the right answer? Well, so it could be a decimal, um, or if it's not a decimal, I mean, we normally don't talk about people with fractional, fractional ages. We normally just say that their age is whatever. But, I mean, who's, whose birthday is later on in this year, right? What's your age? Is it... So, if, if my birthday is next month, my age isn't 2011 minus 1973. It's 2011 minus 1973 minus 1, um, right? Because my, I haven't turned 38 yet. Um, so, uh, so... 2011 minus 1973 is 38, but if my birthday is next month, I'm still 37. So this would give me the wrong answer. So if we really wanted to give the right answer, we'd actually have to store their birth date as day, month, year, and then calculate their birth, their, how old they are based from that. Um, we might look at how to do that. Uh, yeah, well, well we, can, we can actually do that. Let's do that. What the heck? Let's, let's go crazy. We've got a few minutes left. So what we're going to do, I've decided this isn't good enough. It's not good enough to store a year. We've got a few minutes left. We're going to store a date, and this is my birth date. In fact, we're going to say my birthday. Right? So now, rather than asking for a birth year, we're going to ask the person to provide a date, and we're going to store that birth date. So I've changed my design. And this is one of those things you'll find. Right. Um, classically, there's what's called waterfall design. Waterfall design is where we go, where we go look here at this, at this, and we say, yes, we are going to do these in this order. We are going to go out there and find our requirements and then turn them into a specification, then turn the specification into a design and turn the design into implementation. Quiet, please. I know we're just about over, but shh. Right? So waterfall design pretends that we can do these things in this order. That really never happens. No, no project ever gets 
you know, fully written the requirements, then fully write the specifications, then fully write the design, then fully write the implementation. What what actually find is that you go in loops. You, uh, you, you write a design, you start implementing that design, you realize there are some problems with your design, you go back and change your design. Um, maybe you even write an implementation and go back and show it to your users and, and they find out that it doesn't do what they want and so you change the requirements. So really there is, this is a, while this looks like a nice sequence that you start at the beginning and you work till the end, really this is a cycle of going around and around in these things. Um, so, so what we've just discovered is that we decided that having a, a single year for your birthday was not good enough. So we've redesigned to have a, a, a birth date. And now we're going to store that birth date. Um, and now we're going to get clever. How do we... So this isn't good enough. We've decided. So we're going to say, okay, this is a good first guess, but we need to correct it. So we're going to say age equals that. Okay. So I need, in order to calculate this, I've created a, um, a temporary variable that, uh, whoops, stop doing that. I've created, oh, blind me. I've created a temporary variable age. So this is a variable where I'm going to, I'm doing some working, I'm going to throw away the working when I'm finished, but I need somewhere in order to, to keep this, to keep this information while I'm working on it. So I've created a temporary, a local variable age. It's going to be an integer. And at the moment, my first best guess for my age is that. But now I need to test um, whether that's correct. So what I, how do I, so now I need to branch my code. And I, I know it's correct if, if um, my, so first of all, if my uh, today dot, so actually let's work this out rather than try to write the code directly. When is, when is that age wrong? That age is wrong if the month is greater than th to this month, or if the date is, or if the month equals this month and the date is greater than this date, right? So this is right. So this calculation is right if the uh, if their birthday was in a month earlier than this month, or if their birthday was today or any day earlier in this month, right? Then the date is right. But if the if the if their birthday is later on in the year, so if it's in a later month or if it's later in this month, then we're wrong. So we can write that by saying if their birth, if their today, uh, actually that's, sorry, let me correct this. If, so that's my birthday dot year. So if my, oh, that's not year, that's get year, whatever. Get year, I think. So now we say if my birthday dot get month is greater than today dot get month. So my birthday is later in the year. We need to correct the age. So the age equals age minus one. Right? And that will get... So that's true. Otherwise, if my birthday dot get month uh, else if, whoops, that equals, this is really annoying, oh well, oops, that is very annoying when I skip that, oh we're running out of time, I just go, okay, I'll finish this very quickly, and then we'll talk more about it, because this is kind of weird, I'll talk more about it next time, okay, and, uh, it's hard to do, programming in front of a crowd, Okay, get, I think that's day, get, date, get, date. Okay, and then we copy that same line. Okay, so, and because that code is awfully unclear, we just make sure that our code all lines up nicely so that's pretty. And then we say um, subtract one, one from the age if their birthday is later in the year. There we go. And that should give us the right answer. Um, 
If that's confusing, we'll talk more about it next time because we're obviously out of time and I have to run. Um, so thanks for coming and I will see you on Tuesday and we'll do more of our dating site. <laughs>